Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Luke chapter 11, verse 1, as we consider this topic, becoming a man of prayer. I didn't say praying, becoming a man of prayer. What is the difference between praying and becoming a man of prayer? Hallelujah. Praying once in a while doesn't make you a man of prayer. Becoming a man of prayer is that prayer has become a culture, has become a part of you. Everyone dresses up once in a while, but they are people of fashion. Uh huh. A person of fashion doesn't dress up once in a while. Once in a while, he doesn't dress up. Oh, you didn't get that. A person of fashion does not dress up once in a while. Rather, once in a while, he doesn't dress up. The consistent thing about a person of fashion is that he or she is always dressed up. Once in a very blue moon, you can catch them off their feet when they're not dressed up. When you say you're a person of prayer, what it means is this. It means that not to pray is what is inconsistent. Becoming that kind of person that you can be like, oh wow, you know, just like, it's difficult for me to say, I remember a day I did not pray. It's very difficult. Literally like, oh, was there a day I didn't pray? I cannot remember. It's been a long time. Becoming a person of prayer. Glory to God. So Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. So in this teaching, you understand what prayer is. You understand how to become the person of prayer. And particularly, you understand why prayer is really, really powerful. And the process in which to release that dynamic power of God in prayer. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. This is very powerful. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. This was Jesus Christ praying. And I said, every time I read this, this touches me. Because if there's someone that should not pray, it should be Jesus Christ. Just think about it. What do you pray for that you didn't have? The Bible says, rather for Jesus Christ to be the person that does not pray, Jesus Christ was the person that prayed all night, several times, different times, and was always praying. The Bible says, this is very powerful. Because we pray for empowerment, he was power himself. We pray for wisdom, he was what? Wisdom himself. We pray for grace, he was full of grace and mercy. So if there's someone that should not pray, it should be Jesus. But rather we find Jesus Christ crushing it in prayer. And because of how convicting and powerful, how results oriented his prayer life was, see the conclusion of the closest people to him. The Bible says the closest people to him came to him, the apostles, and they said this. They said, they said teach us to pray. They didn't say teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray talks about the methods of prayer. Teach us to pray tells us, teach us to be prayerful. Teach us to prioritize prayer. Teach us to let our knees always touch the ground. What he was asking, see, let me tell you something. The biggest way you start to pray, is not to learn how to pray, is to learn the value, the having that value of prayer. He said, teach us to pray. What does that mean? Prayer can be taught. Very powerful. Prayer can be taught. Someone says, I'm a prayerful person because you've chosen not to learn it. There's nobody that was born as a prayerful person. In fact, I don't know anybody in my life that says, from therefore, I knew how to pray. No. Someone had to teach you. So what is prayer? Let's go into this quickly. So prayer is, in the most basic terms, prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communication with God. In an advanced language, prayer is the intercourse of the soul with God. Not in contemplation, but in direct address with him. You will hear things like this in Exodus chapter 32 verse 11. I was beseeching the Lord. You will hear things like this in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 15. The Bible says they poured out their soul. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 15. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 15. They poured out their soul before the Lord. Prayer is pouring out my soul before the Lord. 
pray in the place of prayer. So prayer is not, you know, sometimes it's good to use great words to pray. But at the core of prayer, it's really what your heart is saying. Because it's the soul being mingled with the power and the presence of God all at the same. It's, an, it's a deep experience. That's why prayer can't be complaining. Because it's not a place of complaint. So when some people go to God in prayer, Lord, this, Lord, that, Lord, this, that's not prayer. You're just complaining. Neither is prayer thinking. Someone says, well, I, I pray in my heart. But what does the Bible say about praying in your heart? The Bible says this. It says, when you pray, say. Did he say so? So that means prayer is, con is linked with talking. That means you cannot pray and not be talking. He says, when you pray, say. Even when he gave us the Lord's prayer, he says, you shall pray after this manner. Our Father. If he said, think it, you will say it. Our Father. So, there is no prayer that is in your mind. All prayer must be altered. It may not be loud, but prayer must be altered. He says, when you pray, say. And that's why a lot of people think they pray. But they are not praying. They are only thinking. Thinking spiritually. What is prayer? Prayer, and this is the biggest number of prayer. Prayer is acting on the, this is a more advanced definition of prayer. Prayer is acting on the willingness of God. Oh my God, to do something. Most people think that when I'm praying, I'm trying to convince God to do something. That's not it. Prayer is not convincing God to do something. No. So, Lord, you know what? I need, I need a job. Like, I need to have a child. You're not trying to cajole him. That's not prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is acting on the willingness of God to do something. What does that mean? When God wants to, you already know that God wants to do this. You're just acting on his willingness to do it. I'll give an example. Have you ever gone to a store before and you're looking around to buy things and there's this particular thing you like and you walked past and you walked again. Finally, you stopped and when you stopped, you now picked it up. You looked at it, looked at it, you dropped it, you went again and came back. You picked it, you picked it, you even held it, and you picked it, then you dropped it. Then the sales lady says, Sir, do you want to buy this? Should I tell you the price? What the sales lady is doing that they are acting on your willingness. That since this is what you want to do, let me help you do it. What is prayer? Prayer is not convincing God. He's that, and this is why some men of prayer said this. He says, when God wants to do something, what it does is to get people to pray. What does that mean? God wants to do something. So, we're saying that we're acting on his willingness to do what he wants to do. Why are we praying for wine press? We're acting on the willingness of God to do what he wants to do. Why are you praying for marriage? I'm acting on the willingness of God to do what he wants to do. So, in the place of prayer, I'm not convincing God I'm only acting on the willingness of God to do what he wants to do. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. When someone now say, Father, won't you pity me and give me a husband? I'm like, you're not praying as if God is willing. You're praying as if God is your problem. And that's something you must change. In the place of prayer, you must know who is against and who is for you. Stop praying as if God is your problem. Pray knowing that God is on your side. I hope you realize that prayer was no man's idea. It was God that invited us to pray. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. I didn't ask him that, let me call. He said, you. He said, I'm inviting you. Call upon me. I will answer you. If you invite me to your house, you must feed me. Oh. If you invite me to pray, then you must answer my prayers. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. Prayer is God's idea. Prayer is acting. On, and once you know this, it's a different way you pray. Because you already know God is within. It's a totally different way you pray. So prayer is acting on the willingness of God to do something. 
for example, you know, um, Pastor, Fe Pastor Nee is over there. He had told me, he said, Pastor Malaji, I want to give you a millionaire. By the time I come to church and I see him, I say, ah, Pastor Nee, where's the millionaire? The request is based on his willingness that he had communicated what previously to give me a millionaire. So, I don't have to cajole him because by himself, he has said he wants to give me money. So, prayer is that request that says, what you want to do, Father, do it. That's what prayer is. That a prayer, prayer is acting on the willingness of God to do what he wants to do. And that's how we can be bold. You know why? Because we don't have to convince him. He's the one that made up his mind to do so. The major challenge with prayer is this. And, and this is a major challenge with prayer. This is a major challenge in prayer. Number one, a lot of people do not understand that the purpose of prayer is fellowship. A lot of people think the purpose of prayer is asking. That's why when you notice people, as they grow older and become richer or comfortable, sometimes they are not just comfortable, they are settled. Sometimes they are not comfortable, they are just settled. They stop praying. They stop or reduce prayer. The reason why is that because they've been thought from when they were young. The purpose of prayer is to ask. So as you grow older, you have kids, you have house, and if you don't have, you've agreed that I'm not going to have. So you settle. But prayer is bigger than asking. The purpose of prayer is communication. Fellowship. Sorry, prayer is for communication. The purpose is fellowship. What is fellowship? Fellowship is that thing you have and you look at your wife and says, how are you doing? How was work today? Not as if you can do anything about what happened at work. But I just want to know you. I, I noticed when you came to the house today, you were very angry. What happened? I just want to know. It's, fellowship is that thing when you want to feel the pulse of God and you want God to feel your own pulse. That's what fellowship is. Unfortunately, a lot of us have learned that the purpose of prayer is asking. But Mark 7:7 7, 7 talks about three dimensions of prayer. It says, Ask and ye shall what? Receive. That's the lowest form of prayer where you ask. The second one is seek. Seek means pursue fellowship. That's another level of prayer. The third one is knock. Knock means partner with me. When you don't just fellowship with me, you begin to take responsibility in prayer, for prayer, for all the things I'm passionate about. By fellowshipping, you know what the burden of my heart is. By knocking, you'll carry out the burden of my heart in prayer. What a powerful state. And the thing is that a lot of, a lot of people here, you will never love a marriage or a dating relationship where the person is always asking you for something and never fellowships with you. But that's what a lot of Christians do. A lot of Christians are always asking. Every time I was asking, when last did you fast and pray and say, what are you fasting for? Just to fellowship. Just to fellowship. Just to, and they say, let's pray for things. He said, I'm not praying for things. Great are you, Lord. It's prayer time. Great are you, Lord. And so I say, okay, that's good, that's good. Next one. You know, you know many of you, eh, you say, but I want to thank you. You don't want to thank him. You are using thanksgiving as a way, like bribe. That let's thank you so we can get to the main thing. I hope you know God sees your heart. God knows where you are going to. So you are the one wasting time. Go where you are going to. Don't, there's no need to fool him. Because he can't be fooled. He saw you trying to, you say, Let, let's just go, let's go, let's go this. No, no, no. Just say, Father, please, I'm in a hurry today. I, <laughs> today, there's no, you know, there's no time for extra praise and worship. I'm going to hurry today. Please, I'm going for this. I need, I need the favor of God. In Jesus' name, amen. But it's okay if, you, if, if that's the situation. But don't not be like, Father, I, you are a mighty God. You are a great God. And you are just hurrying. No. Let the prayer of worship. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. And our God, He's an awesome. He reigns from heaven above, and we stop power, Lord our God. When you sing like that, what do you think the angels are doing? The angels are used to other human beings asking for things. 
But when you sing like that, they are in total awe. Because you are reminding them who our God is. You are reminding them who our God is. You have to transcend basic prayer to advanced levels. You are ho holy. Oh, holy. Are you Lord God? Oh, my mighty. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Ah. Powerful. Not every time. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Sometimes just forget yourself. Just let the tears roll. Let your knees buckle. Let the presence of the Holy Ghost saturate where you are. And when the Lord says, what do you want? He says, Lord, I want you. All I need is you. <laughs> and they say, is that all you want? You're like, I'm like Solomon. I don't want money. All I want is you and your wisdom. All I want is your kingdom. That's all I want. All those people are praying for marriage, are praying for approval. I want you. And the beauty is this. The one that gets the giver gets the gift. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So why is very, prayer very powerful? I, I shared a concept in the first service. But I want to share another concept with you. This is why prayer is very powerful. Isaiah chapter 28 verse, 20, verse 10. Somebody say hallelujah. Why do we pray? The reason why I'm saying why do we pray is that a lot of people are like, okay, why do we pray? I want to explain it to you. I understand. Let me tell you something. I understand if you're not prayerful. Why? Like, because you don't know why it's important. Listen to me. If you are prayed by the amount of time you pray, you become a prayer warrior. Let me say that again. If you are paid for praying, a lot of people become prayer warriors. True or false? So the reason why you don't pray is that you don't know the reason why. I was say, why do you pray for long? You don't know the reason why. So we explain to you today. Isaiah chapter 28. See, verse, very powerful. This is how God speaks. God says, this is how God speaks. It says, this is a precept upon precept. What happens? Line upon what line? What happened? A little here. A little there. Keep going. Keep going. For with what? Strongly lips and what? Another tongue. Will he what? Continue verse 12. That's great. That's great. I want to show you something. He says, hey, a little there, a little, a little here, there. That's how he will speak to his people. I don't have time to really explain that to you. But this is what I want to say. When you pray for clarity, most of the time, clarity does not come at once. How does it come? A little here. A little there. Precept upon precept. The challenge is that people get a little and run away with it as if it's the whole thing. They now get into trouble and say, I thought God spoke to me. You didn't hear the end of the message. Did you remember that? Joseph, God told him. He said, take Jesus Christ and go what? And go into what? Egypt. Yes or no? When he was about to return, what happened? An angel said, return. But don't return back to where you came from. Go to another what? Another place. But all the information did not come at once. What does prayer look like? It's like telephone. When you're using telephone. Oh, hallelujah. Because of bad network, there can be interruptions. So just imagine, just imagine this story. You called your accountant and while you were talking to him, he said, go to Chief Collins Street, number 13, and give them the money there. But because of bad network, your accountant said, go to Chief and give him the money. And he didn't confirm. And there's a guy on your street you call Chief. He takes, he carries the money, goes to Chief and gives him the 10 million. So when he come back, 
The guy is meant to give the money on cheap coins. Now says, where is my money? You said, my guy has given it to you. You ask your guy, where is the money? He said, I've given it to him. But they now come and say, did you give it to me? No. He said, oh guy, you didn't say I should give it to him. You said I should give it to chief. He said, no, that's not what I said. I said, go to chief calling street. He said, oh guy, what I heard was what? Go to chief. That was when the network crack off. The reason why some of you are struggling is this. You took half instruction. This is the power of praying for a long time. When you hear something, you can go back to God and say, this thing I've heard, let it have more meaning. The reason why is that hear a little, ver a little. All you hear is, don't date. You say, just conclude from don't date. I mean, one of the most painful stories I heard, it's a lady, and she told me that from when she was young, a prophet, prophet told her that she has a mark in her head that she will not be married. And I told her, I said, any prophet that said that to you is a wicked person. That they have power to see problem, not solution. But what happened is that they only saw half. Why see problem and not solution? What kind of useless prophet are you? Are you actually listening to me? But this is what prayer does. In the place of prayer, my brother, where's this? Where's this now? Can you flip this for me? Yeah. And maybe you can come somewhere here. Can you bring this for me? Just move gradually. Yeah, just turn it towards me. This is what prayer looks like. Yeah. You can start. Can, you need some help? Are you okay? Okay. This is what prayer looks like. I want to show what prayer looks like. This is what prayer looks like. When you begin to pray, the first thing that happens to you is this. You begin to get restless. The second thing, you begin to get signals. And this guy is painting. But as he's painting, I thought they can help me look at the, the screen now. As he's painting, this thing looks useless. But it's going somewhere. This guy is just painting. In the place of prayer, when you pray, you just be hearing oil and gas. Does it mean oil and gas? Keep praying. The, see, the signals you are receiving does not mean you should go. Let the signals be complete. Before you go and give Chief's money to Chief Collins. You just start feeling this relationship. Maybe I should leave. I should leave. But it's not about leaving. But it's a restlessness you have. But we are quick to jump. So in the place of prayer, there are all these signals. There are all these signals. What is, look at what is he doing right now? This looks useless. This is what prayer does. When you start getting signals, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes it makes little sense. And you jump ahead. What prayer does is that in the place of prayer, you gain more clarity. You just hear hold and gas, hold and gas. Say, yes, thank you Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to Abuja. Do you know what area of the value chain you should be involved in? You don't know what value chain. You don't know what it means is that you never know if that word is for somebody else. So what happens? This is the first step. The first step is this. This is the first step. The first step is that you become a bit restless. And as you pray about something, you can feel because the restlessness tells you that seasons are changing. That's what you, you become. How many of you feel as we just feel as if no, 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 no. My income needs to go up. And that restlessness, you, you, you cannot tell, but that restlessness and the signs are just there. And after the stress, you begin to feel an urge. These are, these are steps to clarity. After the restlessness, the restlessness, and that's why when a woman wants to give birth, what does she feel? She's suffering contraction. Many of you, the things that are depressing you are not meant to depress you. They are indicators that your season is changing. But you do not know, so you're allowing them to depress you. Some of you, the things you see that are causing depression, they are indicators that your season is changing when there's a change of season people will have flu have cough 
it's not because of sickness it's just that seasons are changing oh glory to God the reason why you feel uncomfortable is because seasons are changing don't run away embrace the season what do you do process the season in prayer process the season in prayer yeah, all of a sudden you're wondering ah, I'm doing well in business but I need about 300 million or more and you're getting depressed you don't understand the 300 million you need more means that season is changing and you know the reason I'm saying so instead of you to have joy in contraction you have sorrow because you don't know what the meaning it is and that's why in the Bible you will always hear them say things like this what minute this because what you hear is not as important as what it means and even if you hear and you don't know what it means, what you hear or saw is useless, except you know what it means. What does prayer do? Prayer grants us clarity. That's why when I see businessmen that don't pray, I feel bad. Because how can you see when you don't pray? How can you know when you don't pray? How can you know the season you are in when you don't pray? And it's look, look at how, how is someone look at all this nonsense going here because to you it's nonsense, but the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And the Bible says, Isaiah says, God will speak here a little, there a little. So the first thing you begin to experience is this restlessness, then you begin to have an urge, and, and you have an urge towards this girl. You say, Ah, maybe that's my future wife, and meanwhile, that's meant to be a strategic partner for your business. You turn business partner to your girlfriend you now have a terrible breakup because there was no grace when she's not moved to that office where you get contract from she cannot not help you because you are not in good terms you have used your hand to destroy destiny you now be saying oh my helper oh my helper oh my helper meanwhile the helper god have sent you you de- are you here somebody you just went to Canada. You say, hey, I'll move. What you felt was he relocate. What you felt was he move. Because the truth is that you felt something. But what you felt was he relocate. You just enter into confusion. And what prayer does is that I take what I feel and I examine it in a deeper way. So the first thing is that you become restless. Let me show you something. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. Quickly. Second Peter 1 verse 19. I want to show you the process of how light dawns. This guy has drawn all this nonsense. Nonsense. See, just, just stay here, sir. I don't want to just stay here. Yeah. See what it says about how everything comes. He says, we have a more short of prophecy. Unto well we do well if we take heed. How does the prophecy come? Look at what it says. As a light that shines in darkness. But how does it shine? The light keeps shining. Until what? Until the day dawns. So, the light keeps growing. Until it's the dawn of the day. And guess what? And the day star arises in our hearts. When the light shines, don't move until the day dawns. And the day arises in our heart. My brother, show me what, see, see what he has drawn. All this nonsense. Show me what you have drawn. The only, you know why I said so? <laughs> All the while you thought they didn't make sense. This was what God had in mind. But because you are not the artist, because you are not the one that owns the canva, you couldn't see what God was doing. Some people come into your life not to date. They are helps for now and for the future some relationships that come into your see sometimes you move into a neighborhood not because of house but because you move the neighborhood and you find that the house was not as great as you thought after six months you moved out but you made friends with your neighbor that now becomes a director in the ministry because you didn't understand that the purpose of moving to that estate was not the house god was just looking for a connection point with you and that person 
you begin to fight your wife and say, what kind of nonsense is this? I can't reject it. You did not realize that what or what the enemy took for evil, that God has turned around for good. The reason why is that God does not walk in our own ways. His ways are different. His thoughts if I were you I would just rest and trust God the reason why I love prayer is that prayer has the power to give me perspective so you become restless you get urged and you begin to get all these directions then you know when you get direction you begin to pray about the direction you're getting. Pastor, you tell me that scripture now. John 12, what? John 12, 28. John 12, 28. This is why we pray. Many of you are asking for how to go, but have you gotten full clarity? That's why sometimes we fast for 21 days. Because initially, our emotion is messing up with our minds. There are things we want to do. So, the first week of the fast, this last week, it was about emptying ourselves. Then, second week, direction will start coming gradually. Then, third week, day star will begin to what? Arise. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. That's why I'm excited about wine press. You will hear not just one, full revelation, sir. Full clarity. See what the Bible says. John chapter 12, verse 12. The Bible says, a voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. What did the voice say? Tell me what the voice said. Come on. Tell me what the voice said. And I what? Next line. Next verse. The Bible says, and the people that stood by, what did they say? Read, want to go? They what? Did they hear it or not? What did they hear? Did they see that? The voice said, I have glorified. They hear. They did not have clarity. Some of you, it's not as if God is not speaking. But you are not hearing. The ear is distorted with emotions. The ear is distorted with ambition. The ear is covered with hurt. The ear is covered with pain, with fear. So, when God speaks, you cannot pick out the word. You just know that something was said. What was said, I don't know. Because what you hear is what's thundering. What does prayer do? In the play of prayer, we clarify. We clarify. What does not make sense? It started with painting. In the play of prayer, it begins to make sense. Because we clarify in the place of prayer. Once you don't pray, I feel very bad for you. What clarity do you have about your children? What clarity do you have about your job? What clarity do you have about your marriage? Do you have full clarity or half clarity? Read the Bible. There were people that did half things, half things, half things. Not because they wanted to. They didn't get full instruction. Half things. What clarity do you have? Oh, somebody say hallelujah. You want to know how to pray? Look for people that can pray. Look for a cell. If you don't belong to a cell, find men, married men like you, married women like you and say, please, I need help in this area. Because I don't want my life to go on like this in darkness and in clarity. The second reason why we pray, and I will close this in about five minutes. Hallelujah. Are, are we ready? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. The second reason why we pray. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Oh, somebody say Hallelujah. You are breaking in the crushing Oh my God In the soil I My God now my Now surrender My God Hold on. One time I was praying for someone on the wheelchair. And as I moved to pray for him, I said, you got, God is going to heal you now. And the person did. He didn't do it in a pronounced way, just in a slight way. Like, no. 
And I said, did you see what you did just now? I said, I said, what was going to heal you? You shook your head and said, no. He said, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, yes. I said, you really answered. And I said, what was the problem? He said, I haven't prayed for healing all my life. He said, I'm just tired. And I said, I cannot pray for you in this state because in your heart, you don't believe you'll be healed. Because life happens to people, life can make your heart hard. Your heart will just become hard. You get to a place where you can't believe again. And, and the reason, before you, I sound as if I don't understand. I don't want to sound that way. You get to a place where you can't believe again. And the reason was that you prayed about something two years ago, three years ago, and it didn't happen. And when this, there's a fasting or prayer, you're like, I don't want to raise my emotion high so I don't get disappointed. And you have that with you. And your heart becomes hard. The problem with a hard heart is that God cannot touch a hard heart. So what does God do? He says, so to your servant righteousness. Reap in mercy. But there's a condition. He says, break up your this hard heart. He says, break up your hard heart. He says, break up your hard heart. And the question is this. When did you become the person that became so fearful in business? Was it not after you lost the 50 million in business that you can't try again? Your heart has become so humble, full of unbelief. When did you become the person that can love? When you were younger, you were a lover boy. You were a lover girl. Was it not after that terrible heartbreak? One day I even pray for minor delay. I beg, I'm not going to with that one. Let me just get money and go. And your heart is broken. Why did you become the person that cannot believe God? Like you used to believe God. There was a time you used to pray. Was it not that time that something happened and it changed your prayer life? I was speaking in the first service about Pastor Jay. Even many years ago, Pastor Jay bought this brand new car. Not Tokumbo. Brand new tear rubber. And he was the first leader in our church that ever bought a brand new car in the core leadership. So we brought the car. It was a big celebration for all of us. Big celebration for all of us. And when he brought the car, very powerful, brought the car. We were all shouting and rejoicing. Then two weeks, the car was stolen. You'll have stopped that. I'll have said, and we saw it after two weeks. It was stolen forever. And guess what? How will you feel a pastor, a tither, a servant of God? And I'm grateful that his faith was able to pass that. But there are some people from that moment, their heart will become. So, what's the use of serving God if they can't steal my car? His own testimony is that despite all, I am stronger. Some of the testimonies that, well, that was what destroyed my Christian experience. You know what I'm saying this to you? A lot of you are young, but your heart is old. Your heart is weak. You are carrying too much. You entered this year already exhausted, even though we are still in January, because of the state of of your heart and God is saying this prayer I want to break up fallow ground why if I don't break fallow ground I cannot enter praise God I said praise God have you ever gone to a spa before to have facials you know what they do in a spa before they touch you what they do is that they will wash the face then they will steam it. They are not treating it here too. Why they steam it? So that all the inner deaths can come out. The black heads, the white heads. They want to open the pores so that the treatment can get in. God says, before I can touch you, I have to break you. I have to steam you. 
I have to let all the heads enter. Let, let me get a volunteer. Can I get a lady, a lady here to come? Can I get a lady to come? Maybe, maybe someone, you know, someone, just a lady that maybe not with makeup, you know. Here, come, come, my lady. Come, come and sit down here. Come and sit down here. And she's going for facials right now. Thank you. You can let me turn off that AC for a minute. And this is very powerful. Because some of you, I know you want God to touch you. But God says, can I touch your heart first? I want to ask you, when did you become the person scared of love? What happened to you? Pay attention to me. Leave them out. When did you become the person scared of love? What happened to you? When did you become the person scared of church? When did you become the person that does not care about prayer? What happened to you? It's always something that happens. And what God does first is that break up the fallow ground. You were not like this before. But life happened. Life made your heart tough. And when God wants to touch it, God has to exfoliate first before he can walk on the inside. And sometimes, this heat is not nice, but it's needed. The heat is not nice. It's needed. Tandy, tell me, why is it good to steam the face first? The first, first, because uh, we're preparing the skin for a deep cleanse so that all the products can penetrate and help you with your skin. Did you hear that? He says we have to prepare the face. Some of you, God is not ignoring you, just preparing you. There are things he has to get rid of because they are poison that have entered into your soul. And what else, ma'am? The other thing is that it helps you to perspirate and it softens the fat in the skin and it also helps you with the circulation because your blood has to circulate so that your skin can glow it's for your well-being so it's not just for the first also for the body like what we did in COVID everybody steamed in COVID right so steam is very good for your well-being exactly I don't know if I should send us a product or not <laughs> but you know what as you steam, it says for circulation. You know the problem? Where is hard in your life that God has been trying to touch that you're hiding? Some of you, it's an emotional area. Some of you, it's your finances. Some of you, it's forgiveness. And why prayer is powerful is that God begins to steam you. How does God steam you? Start with some worship. Songs of consecration. Lord, I give myself away. Songs like the one they were singing. So I yield to you into your careful hands. Put the lyrics on the screen, please. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me your vessel. My God. Make me my God, make me whatever you want me to be. Did you hear that? I came here with nothing. Oh, my God, but all you have given Lord, me. Lord, steam me, open my pulse. I need black heads to come out, white heads come out. Will you start from the first and the crushing? Did you see that? That's where we start from. In the press, we, we press it. We we have to press it. At some point, we begin to press it. Press it. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking. Ground. Amen. You know what? God does not do dressing job. God does root work. God does not do what? 
dressing job. Some of you, yes, just give me. Some of you, since it doesn't do dressing job, God does what? Roots work. Some of you are looking for dressing job. Let them just touch me. Ah, no. God says, roots work. Roots work. This fasting is about roots work. This prayer, because some things have to be uprooted from the roots. The fear has eaten so deep, you don't even know you are fearful. Even your wife now knows that this is not the man I married. There was a time you carried fire for God. What killed your fire? I look at you right now. Since then, you've had a divorce. Since you've had a divorce, you felt like a secondary citizen of the world. And God said, get up and move on. But yet, you will not get up. Since you have lost the money, you are so afraid, so timid, you can't come again. And the poison, like if they start exfoliating now, you see white things will come out of the face, black things. Those things are in the skin. And God says, I need to bring out some things. Since that breakup, you just say you have recovered. You have not. Since that person died, who knows what I'm talking about here? If you do, wave your hands. Let me see. Can I get someone that can share one experience with me? One experience. Yep. Please give her the microphone. You can just sit down. Yep. Give her the microphone here. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I got a divorce about seven years ago. And I thought I was over it. I thought I was fine. Um, but every time somebody talks about marriage, and Pastor B, you know you've talked about this before, I just shut down and I never listen. You can tell me the most preposterous thing. You can tell me that tomorrow I'll be the CBN governor without having any financial background, and I'll believe it. I'll see it. But when it comes to that part of it, I don't see it. And because of that, I always self-sabotage. Even if good people come my way, I don't see it. I don't recognize it. I just feel that... I don't want to be open again and I don't want to be broken. And, and, and you know the thing, and, and one of the things you've been praying about is this, right? Yes. Did you listen? This is what she's praying about, but with her own hands, she's walking against it because her heart is closed. It's not just about marriage or relationship, it's finance. You lost some money in business, and since that time, you cannot move on again. And God said, I can heal you. Let's pray.